Okay, so I think we're uh, about a minute prior our presentation. Uh, so I guess it's fair to start on time. So welcome everybody. Uh, my name is Julia Trejo. I, I am a part of the Board of Directors for SITE, which is the Society for, uh, for Incentive Travel Excellence. Uh, I am here to uh, give a little bit of my experience to you about uh, site inspections. Um, first of all, I would like to know who is in the audience. Uh, and I, I don't bite, so you can come to the front if you want. If not, that's perfectly fine. So if um, we can start by... Uh, for me, know a little bit about you. So if we have any buyers in the audience, could you please stand up? Any buyers? Everybody's busy outside in the meetings, maybe? So um, are we in agreement that everybody here in the audience is a supplier? Perfect, okay. Well, I am a supplier too. I, uh, I am, uh, my real job is, uh, I'm the director of business development for a DMC in Mexico. Uh, my experience comes from uh, 25 years in the DMC field. Uh, prior to that, uh, my other only job was in an airline. I have no experience with hotels, uh, but of course I have been collaborating with hotels for a very, very long time. Um, so yeah, so that's um, basically what, what can I start with. I would like this also to be a little bit interactive and even though I am trapped here in my microphone and I would like to be out there with you guys, um, I will try to be as much um, you know, interactive as possible. So let's start. There's a lot of stories, right, about site inspections and all of us, we do have a lot of stories to say. Um, I am sure that you all have faced this first time when you are in front of your first client and they're saying, we're coming to your destination. Do we have any CBBs here? Any CBBs uh, here? Thank you. Do we have DMCs here? Several. Uh, hotels? Just a couple, okay. Um, are you uh, also part of uh, uh, the, you know, the, the supplier chain? In what aspect? Can I please know what, what's your company? IT. So do we have any more IT companies here? Perfect. Um, all right. So I think we have a little mix of everything. Airlines? No airlines? No? Okay. All right. So let's start with um, telling you pretty much what I think is the key, um, the key objective here is to understand the goals of our clients, right? I think it's very clear for us, for everybody, that the most important uh, part here uh, for us to uh, start planning a site inspection is to understand the goals and objectives of our of our clients, so let's um, let's do that and uh, let's uh, start with um, the decision making tool. So, I also want to let you know that this course brought by uh, to you by Site is part of a sales uh, uh, of a track of learning courses that our organization puts together for um, uh, this type of events and also in our conferences. Um, this course also, this track, is very focused on incentive travel, but I am sure that it can apply to you uh, if you are more into the association field or con congresses or conventions. So that's, um, that, that's uh, in part something that you can, that you can learn from. All right, so, you know, we have been uh, most likely been in, a, a, as I mentioned uh, uh, during the, the first part of my presentation, uh, 
you know, with, with the first question is, uh, what are the goals and objectives of my client? What's exactly what they're looking for when they come for a site inspection? So uh, for that, we are going to uh, start with the sales, uh, with the site visit and the sales process. So before the contracts and, and, and uh, the, the evaluation starts to be negotiated, um, the way to help close your business, uh, uh, of course, will uh, start here. The site visits will give you several, you know, several tools. One of them that is very important is to actually provide the buyers with a preview of what the destination will be also have the feeling of what their participants are going to encounter in the destination, what kind of amenities, what kind of activities they uh, will find there, and, and other things. Um, al also another advantage for this is the opportunity for the buyer to meet with the supplier. In this case, to see face-to-face -face who are the partners that we're going to have in, in, in this opportunity, in this site. Uh, for us, for, our, for, for the supplier side, it will give us an opportunity to showcase our destination uh, and also uh, the offerings that we have, the services that we have, the staff, uh, who's going to work with our clients, uh, and the opportunity also to build a rapport with, with them, with our potential clients um, and if you allow me I can also give you some little examples of what ha what has happened to me in my personal experience that may help you um, um, you know to, to, to see uh, the perspective that somebody from Mexico where we have a lot of uh, incentive programs coming where we have also a lot of challenges uh, can apply so one time I was having this site inspection. Uh, I never met the client before. My client never liked to speak o over the phone. Everything was by email. She never had the time to, you know, start. It's, it's, dif it's different and difficult when you don't even have the pulse of how the client speaks, what's, what are their, you know, their, um, their, their first impressions of the destination, nothing. Everything was very plain on paper. Um, so she was also very, very quick in her emails. One line and that was it. So I knew exactly a year ago uh, in these dates I was planning to come to IBTM work. And then she sends me an email and she says, I'm coming uh, November so and so the dates. And they were exactly the dates for IBTM, and I already, of course, bought my ticket, and I, everything was set already. So what happens next? What I would guess everybody here in the audience would do, I canceled my trip, I, I, I didn't come here, and I started planning this site inspection. Um, then the client was uh, very unresponsive on what she wanted to do, what hotel she was staying, uh, what were the activities she wanted to see, anything. So then what happened was um, an email from me uh, asking because the day was approaching and I said, could you please share with me what um, uh, would be the um, goals and objectives for this visit? What is, what is exactly what you would like to, to do? What is exactly what you would want me to show? Nothing, no response, nothing. So um, after I guess two emails or three, and I was very persistent, she finally said, I don't have the time. The only thing I can tell you is I'm also working with another DMC. And uh, so it was two of us, right? It was me, another DMC. The hotel was already set, so I was okay with that. Um, so I said, okay, so what, I, what I'm sensing here is that she doesn't know how to split the services between one DMC and the other. She doesn't want to tell me what I want to do because she doesn't know. So what I did was I actually uh, sent her an email and I said, would you mind if I contact the other DMC? We m have a discussion and we actually decide because we are the local experts, we know exactly what we want to show you and we can split 
uh, the services between the two of us. She sent me an email, the first email I received after all these months, more than one line, and she said, this is the first time a DMC is telling me that she's going to collaborate with another DMC with the competition. And at the end of that site inspection, um, I uh, actually I have to say that I got uh, the the least time with the client. The other DMC had the, the, the most of the most time, and we won the program. So um, that could be pretty much an idea that I can tell you uh, that can give you those little you know messages from the client, even though they're not communicative with you. They don't want to tell you anything. Um, just learn how to read them through the lines, even though if it's one line, and, um, and see exactly what are their needs. Okay, so let's um, start with the planning. Um, for the planning, there's, of course, uh, again, needs and wants from the client, and also needs and wants from us, the suppliers. So let's, uh, let's move on. For the buyers, uh, they pretty much should have a checklist, right? Uh, something that gives them um, uh, what exactly are they looking for. So number one for me, even though <laughs> uh, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not said, but it's a, it's a rule that, it, that should be all the time, is that we need to be transparent. Remember, a, a site inspection is not a farm trip. When a client has a true opportunity for us uh, in the destination is when we consider this a site inspection. When our clients are thinking of our destination to maybe in the future sell uh, uh, our services, our hotels, our uh, uh, any kind of service that we provide, that is a farm trip. So. Uh, sometimes I think us, the buyers, we have the wrong perception and uh, we also sometimes, and me in my Mexican nature, because mi casa es su casa and because uh, hospitality is in our DNA, we never ask these kind of things. But it's important that we put on f up front exactly what we uh, want to hear from our client, what, are, wh what exactly is that they're looking for. Um, also, buyers should uh, make reasonable um, requests. In this case, for example, um, it could happen that you are, uh, I don't know, maybe a DMC in Chicago, and they're uh, coming in March where it is snowing like crazy, but they wanna see, uh, I don't know, maybe an outdoor venue that is not open. So. Buyers should plan in advance this type of things, and it's the responsibility of the supplier to be upfront and say, we cannot uh, you know, uh, uh, show you this because of this, this is what happens. Um, also, including as many aspects of the trip as possible. Um, what are the demographics? What is exactly that they're, um, uh, looking for uh, in terms of are, are they arriving, uh, their par participants arrive in a, uh, in bulk or is just scattered transfers? Um, what are the activities that they're looking for? It, it, it always happens that we are uh, maybe offering, and, and it happens a lot with hotels, they just offer a, a venues that are not fitting the, the entire program or that they're not uh, uh, important for the for the client. Uh, I have, uh, for example, hotels that they're very focused on their convention services and the client uh, comes and they are showing the rooms and uh, the meeting space and how many uh, meters the, the biggest meeting room is. Uh, it's, it's not important for them because it's an incentive program, for example. So uh, we really need to read all of that information before, uh, uh, in during the planning process. Uh, also for the buyers, it's important to let us know 
if we are competing with, with, with another company. It makes us um, bring our best, yes, uh, but also uh, for in terms of space, in terms of if we're in involving other suppliers, we would know exactly if uh, we're maybe booking twice for the same client or maybe uh, using the same resources for that specific client. Um, and also uh, the, the other thing that, that becomes uh, sort of, and I just had a site inspection that, that became too long, uh, that what could be two days for a site, it becomes four or five days for a, for a vacation. So we need to be very, very clear on what we are camping in our office. For example, we have a policy and the policy is a full day of uh, transfers for the site inspection, a meal, and uh, the round trip transfers for the MC services. The hotels, um, I know that what they do, some of them, they offer one night for complimentary and then uh, the rest of the rate that if they contract with uh, the hotel can be returned in the master bill or uh, they charge uh, the entire stay for the site inspection and if the group confirms, uh, they actually put it in the master back to them as a refund. So be also very, very clear with that. So for the suppliers, uh, what do we want to confirm? Uh, we want to know who is coming. Uh, it also happens sometimes that we have uh, uh, just, just the participant coming, the, the client, uh, and then all of a sudden we have uh, that the client brought somebody, uh, which is their client. What also happens, and I don't know if, if you have experienced that before, but for me, uh, working with many in, uh, um, incentive houses and, and other agencies, uh, what I experience a lot is that they, uh, my client comes first for a couple of days. They get um, you know, uh, acquainted with the, with the destination before their client arrives, and then they repeat the site inspection. So uh, we try to be very, very, uh, um, very clear with the process at the beginning. So when their client arrives, uh, they, they are experts for the two days that they have been inspecting the area. Also confirming the details with the vendors. It also happens that we are showing the most beautiful venue only to find later that it won't be open for the program or it, that is not available for the dates that we're actually working on. So we need to be very, very careful with that too. Also, um, planning, planning uh, to show our best is uh, what we want to do. Uh, there are uh, many, many examples, but um, I, can, I can tell you, for example, one, one right now is about a venue that we have in Mexico, in Los Cabos. It's a plain desert area. There's nothing there. And uh, we use uh, the help of our AV company and also our decor company, and it became a beautiful setup uh, that later we could sell for a private dinner. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be very, very easy to do with the help, help of our vendors. The other thing that I like to do also is to showcase the food uh, of the destination. So sometimes uh, we bring some uh, renowned chefs of the area. And what I do in order to maximize the time is why I'm showing, for example, a boat. Uh, I ask the chef, because that chef is gonna work just in the evening, so I ask him to come in the morning for a boat ride for an hour. And he can just make, maybe make a couple little things in the boat, get acquainted with the, with the client, uh, they, they showcase their, their food. And it was just uh, 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 um, you know, something that, that he did in an hour. So it's, it's very, very easy. Uh, also, another thing to consider is the contingency plans that we may have. You know, in destinations that we are uh, uh, right now, uh, it's you know, imperative, important to show exactly what is going to happen 
in any case, in any type of uh, emergency, uh, show exactly the plans, the emergency uh, preparedness plan, um, and, and go over that with the client once they arrive from the airport and all the way back. Okay, so let's move with um, what both of us, the suppliers and the buyers, we um, need to know. So the client arrived, we pick them up at the airport. We are uh, now in site inspection mode. What do we do is in the buyer side, in our client side, um, I think uh, uh, we're just uh, listing some of the most important, uh, but um, I, uh, f for me is uh, just picturing exactly what the group will be at the site. It happens many times that uh, we maybe lose a little bit of perception uh, in 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 the you know in the eye of what the client is actually enjoying versus with what the group will be uh, uh, fit for. What I mean with this is that uh, I don't know maybe the client loves wine, for example. And then we just focus all, all of our efforts in showing the best wineries, uh, showing the best places, restaurants that offer that, but we lose focus on exactly what the, 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 the group will have, right? Um, also, uh, another important thing is when, when we lose track on uh, determining what uh, can work with the supplier. Because in our effort of selling, sometimes the, the, the perspective of what is actually the truth, and it just happened to, to I, I'm just happening to remember, uh, I was showing a venue, and the client was uh, just giving me very vague response on the timing, and I really, really asked her at what time was uh, her event because the song was selling at a certain time, and then we can check very easily in our calendars. In March, for example, sun sets by 5.30. And then we were doing a site inspection in, uh, during the summer. So of course, the timing wasn't correct. So at the end, that could affect the program because of, the, of all of the timing and the departures and everything. Um, then the, the um, language barrier is also uh, sometimes a problem. Something that can be customary for a pe person from, uh, in this case, from uh, America, where uh, I come from, could be very different from a, a European client and vice versa. It's something that is very easy for me to understand may not be the case for somebody that comes from Asia. So those um, cultural differences are also very, very important. And then it, something to consider from the, from the buyer perspective is also what would happen if, right, in the case of the supplier being under pressure, how we would respond to uh, any, any case of, uh, I don't know, having, not having control of the transfers, not having control of uh, the chef that is late for a certain dinner, or something that is not working really well. So um, one thing that the buyers consider a lot for that is uh, being under pressure. So now uh, for the suppliers, a check, a check, a little checklist. Um, <coughs> so sorry. So uh, very, very important is to actually tailor the agenda for the wants and needs of our client. Uh, we have to learn as much as possible once the uh, client is on site in, in our destination. Uh, ask questions all the time. Just, just keep asking what if this, what if that, uh, and try to learn also the, um, the faces that, that they're, the, the, you know, the, the response, the image that they're, that they're doing. Um, all of the details and the agenda, have the dates exactly in your mind. Uh, I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens a lot to me. 
the client is always like, oh yeah, on Thursday we're gonna do this, and on Friday we're doing this, and then on Sunday, and sometimes we lose track, right? Because we have like 20 different programs working at the same time. We don't know what kind of Sunday or Thursday uh, we're talking about, so let's just focus on the dates that we're having right there during, this, during the site inspection. Uh, we need to keep uh, the agenda flexible and ask as much questions as possible. So I don't know if, if you have any questions right now, anything that you may want to know more in detail, anything, no? So for me, uh, a, a very simple, simple um, example that I can give you, I will take this time to actually give you a case study to give you an example of a, a, a client and then uh, maybe we want to discuss a little bit of uh, some of the um, examples and options that you, uh, that you may have. So I'm gonna uh, read this. Uh, it describes a sales interaction between an incentive travel supplier and a sales professional uh, for an incentive travel company. So consider what the buyer should want to find uh, or achieve during the site visit and uh, do the same for the supplier. So this is the example, it's uh, actually in Chicago. So uh, uh, a buyer, which is Janet Manson, is an incentive travel buyer who's working for a Fairview Manufacturing. And this is a large manufacturer of uh, other parts. She's working for um, uh, incentive travel experience for uh, the Fairview supervisors and managers whose divisions have exceeded their production by 15% or more. So there we have the goal and the objective, right? We, we know that, that she's working on, a, on an incentive trip and that these are supervisors and that these are managers and that they, these, these uh, qualifiers exceeded already their production by 15%. In the past, over 200 managers have qualified for the incentive trip. So then, then we have the amount. We have 200 uh, participants plus guests. So Fairview's primary facility is located in Roar uh, in South Dakota. Janet has worked with Fairview for many years and she's very familiar with the community of qualifiers and their likes and dislikes. So this is a planner that has been working a lot with this company and she knows exactly, sometimes they even know uh, the participants by name and uh, she knows what they, what they like and what they want. Although this group uh, often describes as farm kids, she knows that they enjoy visiting big cities. So these are rural people that like to go to big cities. Um, and, ex and they experience the exciting city environment, so different from the rural community. So what they wanna do is something that is uh, different and exciting. Many of them have uh, engineering backgrounds and are interested in technical and in engineering fits. In the past, Fairview incentive travelers have visited New York City and Los Angeles. So they have been in big, big uh, cities. Fairview has instructed Janet that they're reducing their budget for this trip by 10%. So that's the first downer, right? So the first downer is that, yes, everything is very exciting, but we need to be careful with the budget. Uh, okay, so while many of the previous year participants we will most likely qualify for this trip, so they repeat. So these are people that are year after year looking forward to this incentive. Uh, express the desire to return to New York City. So they like New York so much, they wanna come back. Janet knows that the budget will not go far enough in the Big Apple, so that's the, the other thing. Yes, they want to come back to New York, but it's expensive, right? So. Fair, Fairview agreed to Janet's recommendation of Chicago for the next incentive travel destination. So what they call the second city, right? Chicago offers all the amenities of a large urban area, but Janet believes they can save money on the cost of both the transportation and the lodging. Janet scheduled a side visit to Chicago to meet with the representatives of two DMCs a Fairview buyer and a member of the executive team. So they're, they're having a mix in the site inspection. 
the Fairview buyer and executive are slightly hesitant about traveling around Chicago because of the recent press about violence. So everybody has all those kinds of things happening in our destinations, no? Um, there's always something that is negative press, um, so it makes it a little bit more difficult. <coughs> so Andy Scofield is the owner of the destination Windy City, so that's the DMC. So Andy is the owner. And he and Janet have never worked together. They do not know each other very well. He has talked with uh, her a number of times over the phone and submitted a re uh, response to their RFP. However, Andy would like to understand more about the preference and interest of the potential participants in order to plan the perfect Chicago experience. So he's very willing, very open to work with the client. Janet's RFP indicated that the qualifiers fall into two groups, middle age men and women who have been managers for at least 15, so mature, very mature uh, participants. And then she has also another group that are millennials. So these millennials who have less years, uh, uh, less uh, than five years of experience as supervisors or managers. Janet's um, RFP describes many members of this group as professional sports fans. So they love like football and baseball and all that. Um, they also like like theater because you know they were in New York and they love the shows. So they are trying to repeat the same experience. Andy has many ideas for memorable experiences. He doesn't know much which sports uh, the group is more interested in. So he knows that he, they like sports, but he doesn't know if it's for football or, or baseball or what kind. But he has ideas already. He's ready to go. Andy has many possibilities. Uh, he can set up attendance at the White Sox baseball game. They can be to the Cubs, the, to the Bears. I mean, he has lots going on. Participants might enjoy attending a Broadway in Chicago production with, with a behind the scenes tour to meet the cast. Or they might go for a private reception, an architecture cruise on a private yacht on the Chicago River. So this is, this is my, my deal to you because again, I feel very confined in this area over here, up over here. So I'm just gonna start by if you would like to partner with somebody that is next to you. Uh, as, we, as we learned in the beginning of this session, uh, pretty much we're all um, suppliers, uh, but I'm sure that we can find uh, a partner. Let's review what I just uh, mentioned about this program, 200 people going to Chicago, doing this, let's review that. And uh, if we can identify six key elements for the visit. This is where everybody will start maybe going because uh, sometimes just working along may not um, um, do very appealing, but um, let's just try to learn a little bit more about this. Um, so uh, if we can identify six key elements for this visit, three for the buyer and three for the supplier, and maybe try to, to work around it. Do you think this is a good deal? Or should I just keep going and tell you some other examples about site inspections? I actually want to listen to you, so. What would you like to do? Do you wanna do this? Yeah? No? Let's do it? Okay. So let's work on this. And I'll just repeat if you want. So do you want to make groups or two or three? Yep. And I start working on that. I can, I can just give you again some key elements that we just mentioned. Perfect. Thank you for doing that for those that are starting to discuss. Let's do it. Okay, thank you. We have a few minutes. We won't be here for an hour talking. So yeah, don't be afraid. Just start talking.
So I'm going to give you uh, just a, a buyer perspective for you to keep uh, discussing. So the buyer's perspective is uh, uh, what should the buyer plan to learn more? Uh, what should the buyer plan to learn more about during the site visit? What does Janet and the Fairview team need to know in order to make the buying decision between the two DMCs? List three things that you would like to explore more in depth if you were in Janet's position. If you were a buyer and you already have all of that information and they're going to meet you at the airport, what would be those three key elements that you want to know from your supplier that you're, that you're meeting at the airport? Uh, and from each item you identify, what would be the way Janet might obtain that information? So making the right questions, right? Uh, so that, that is the point of discussion in terms of the buyer. And in terms of the supplier, so for, for this guy, which is the DMC uh, and the other, uh, what should the supplier want to find, up, uh, find out about the buyer's incentive travel plans? We already know that, that the, the planner is coming with a client and the decision maker, which is the president. What should Andy plan to showcase or achieve during the site visit? Remember that the guy has a lot of um, uh, ideas already but he doesn't know some, some little details. So those details is what we're, we're trying to accomplish. So at least three things that you would want to explore more in depth uh, if you were in the supplier's position. For each item you identify, write down a specific way that Andy might accomplish these objectives during the site visit. So uh, both perspectives are important. Okay, so let's just, just keep going, discussing two minutes, and then if we have at least one of you guys to share with us, that would be awesome. Okay, so two more minutes, and then we're done. And by the way, I, I will email uh, you guys, if you uh, give me your cards, uh, all the guidelines, uh, and I can give you uh, that information if you give me your, your business card. If you just leave it, leave it here. I will email that to you. So yeah, two, mi two more minutes and then we're done. Okay. So is there anyone that would like to come to the stage and share uh, some of what you have been discussing? You? Awesome. Please come on over. All right. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bianca from uh, Andorra, from the Pyrenees. And uh, we were um, talking together with my friend, new friend from Rwanda, <laughs> about the possibilities. And what we have noted is that uh, uh, the buyer, Naya, they, uh, we took note that they like sports, that they like big cities, and that we have to think of a lower budget. And for the supplier, also the lower budget, so spare on lodging and on transport, maybe include a walking tour as they like sports. And then uh, three, four star, but good quality and good connectivity uh, online, but also with the uh, also offline with the center, so that they can come easily to the center of uh, of Chicago. Awesome. Those are our points. Perfect. That's great. I'll give it it for 
like her. She was awesome. Yeah, so, so things to consider, of course, for me, number one is how much money we're talking about, right? Because we are in this business and we want to know uh, how we can work together. It, it, it was very clear from the beginning that they tried to save 10% of their budget from New York City. So already we have uh, something right there. Um, safety issues. It was very clear in the, in the, in the debrief that they are looking for something um, along the way of New York City, but they have been hearing that Chicago is in, uh, having some pre negative press. So all the safety uh, um, checks, uh, as I mentioned in, in, in our talk, is the emergency preparedness uh, uh, information, insurance policies, uh, 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 all of the routes uh, that could be uh, important. Uh, all of that is very, very key for uh, the buyer. Uh, also, uh, how we can do uh, memorable experiences without maybe spending a lot of money. Um, the, the buyers appreciate when we do things, little things that don't cost much, but they can be super, super, um, uh, uh, you know, aspirational for our, for our participants. And then for um, our DMC, the friend, our friend DMC that, that was, uh, uh, you know, very open to everything, he would love to know what kind of a sports these guys are uh, looking for because they, they might be super fans of something, but if he doesn't have all the specifics, that might be a problem. And then uh, the other uh, interest uh, for, remember that we have two groups people that are already uh, uh, with years of experience that have been winning this for a number of years, but we also have millennials that have been five or less uh, years of experience in the office. So we need to find a happy medium. We need to find uh, things to do for both of them. Um, so yeah, so those could be like the key interests for one and the other. So at the end, collaboration is key. Uh, communication with the client but as I mentioned in the beginning with my little example about my client from last year sometimes we just uh, you know face a barrier and we don't know what to say how to say it let's just keep asking questions and try to find that hot button that the client will just give a click and say yes of course that's exactly what I was looking for um, not is not is not easy sometimes because you know our clients are always uh, busy they're always and right now for example uh, with with certain uh, like I have a, a lot of Silicon Valley clients they don't even have time for me to talk in the phone let alone texting or anything uh, now I have learned for example and, and if you would like to learn more about some applications and and, and all that uh, Asana is one of the um, uh, planning apps that my clients are using. So we share Asana, if you want to look at in uh, Google, it's asana.com. And it's a planner that is shared. She puts ev everything she wants there with deadlines, and I just follow it, and, uh, and that's how we're communicating. She doesn't even email me anymore, or let alone call. Um, and there are, other, there are other other tools that we're we're using to communicate. WhatsApp, everybody has WhatsApp. Clients are not <laughs> sending emails anymore. They're sending everything through WhatsApp, contracts, everything. So I was the first one that was actually against that for a long time. But now I learn because I had to learn about my market that that's the way they want to communicate because it's instant. So that's another thing that, that may help you. Uh, uh, might not be what we want to do, but is, is what is happening right now. So um, as I mentioned to you, what, we, uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I can gladly send you um, the guidelines with all of what we discuss, everything that we discuss, and the case study uh, with the elements that we have been just talking about. Uh, I, I have a very little uh, 
uh, quest uh, here. Uh, our friends of Slido uh, were very um, eager to uh, help us with this quiz. And uh, it's just a couple of questions. If you want to open in your app in IBTM and you go to the uh, um, participation, I think it's participation um, uh, part of the app for Slido. And if you want to fill out these uh, questions, uh, um, the first one is a site visit that occurs during the sales process before contracts are signed can help close the deal or help buyers roll out an incentive travel package. Is this true or is this false? So you can actually answer the question over there in Slido. Ready? So, false. If you put if, if if you put false, oh okay, yeah. No, you know. Um, let's see what happened here. I don't know what happened. For, for me, it is it is it is very weird. But it is very weird. But the answer the answer should be actually true. So for the 71%, thank you, because something here happened that I, I don't know, but it was actually true. So yeah, yeah, a site visit can help close the deal or help the buyers roll out an incentive travel package. Yes, yes, it's true. I have the next one. The site visit is an excellent opportunity for discussions about contingency plans in case problems occur during the incentive travel experience. And I think my guy from Slido is gonna kill me because this is going to be actually true. And I said the other side around. So sorry, guy. But you know what? I don't know why, but I have it here backwards. But it's actually true. And then the last one is suppliers should stick to the agenda itinerary for the site visit to make sure that the buyer experiences exactly what the supplier originally planned for the incentive travel experience. And what did I do here, Mr. Slido? Did I do it right or wrong? And yes, you are right, my dear audience. The answer is actually false because we should be able to change everything in our site inspections, right? We should be able to say, you know what, this won't work for you, so let's let's change it, let's do it differently, let's take this out um, because the name of the game in this business for everybody is the constant in always in our business is the change, change for everything and um, collaboration. So I think that's it for me. If you don't have uh, any questions, I would say you have been a lovely audience. Thank you so much for staying and be daring and, and say, yes, I wanna discuss about this topic because as I just said uh, to, to some uh, of the participants here, if we don't open our minds and discuss about what happens uh, in our business, if we don't be, um, if we are not uh, open to to share, then we're not like moving forward in our in our uh, business. So thank you, thank you so much for staying. Thank you.